Hi everyone, this is Marcus Curtis from Marcus Curtis Music and we are still exploring the Cakewalk app. It's an incredible app and it does a lot as you have seen. You know, you go to Band Lab to get it for free. It doesn't cost you anything. So we're going to pick up in part two. I want to pick up right where we left off. So let's get started. Okay, let's look at the inspector view. But before we do that, let's go ahead and open up our drums. And now we're going to have all of this fit to the screen by hitting F. So here's all of our individual tracks. So let's go up to inspector. We're going to hit views and go down to inspector to display the inspector. Now we can dock this if we want. Just hit this little triangle and we can dock it left. And now it's on the left hand side. If we Hit the triangle and dock right. Now it's over on the right hand side. Let's go back and dock it left. This is the default view for the inspector. Now we can collapse this by hitting I. And hitting I again will bring it back. We can also collapse it by hitting these little double triangles. Okay, so whatever um, track we highlight over here is going to display over here in the inspector view. So if we hit click on one, this changes to one. If we click two, it changes to two. So if we click six, it changes to six. Here's our sends right here. Okay. So over here, this strip is the bus. So here's track six, and this is the bus that track six is sent to. So we click on pro channel, and the pro channel for that channel opens up. If we click uh, track, and then we can see uh, information regarding the track and information regarding the clips in that track hit clips again and it displays as normal okay the nice thing about the inspector view is that it even works on the bus section so if i come down here to the bus section and i grab it and i pull it up and then i highlight the section and i hit f it blows up all of the buses but then if i highlight the reverb bus here is the reverb bus if i highlight the delay here is the delay and these are routed to the master but if i go up to the master you can see it's routed to our output, our Behringer output here. So if I bring up the uh, 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 console view by hitting D in the dock section, and let's go up and pull this up. And then I'm going to go over here and pull out in the console view. Here is our eight outputs. Remember, we have 32 in and eight out. So we have stereo out. So mono, mono, mono times eight. Okay, but that shows up. Let's get rid of the dock view here. Collapse the multi dock, and that shows up over here. So if this is highlighted, you could see here's our Behringer output that the master bus is assigned to. Kind of a handy feature. Let's go ahead and bring down the bus section, and we're going to collapse the inspector. Okay, now it's time to check out the browser view. Let's go up to Views here and click on Browser. And you can see the browser comes up. Now, just like the inspector, we can dock this. We can uh, use this and dock it left, and hit this little triangle again, and dock it right. Or we can dock it down into the multi-dock, just like that. And so we have the console, the matrix, and the browser. We can take it out of the multi-dock. I'll just dock it right, which is what we're going to do. Okay, and let's go ahead and collapse the multi-dock by hitting D. Okay. Okay, so the browser serves a lot of functions here. There are three main tabs. Okay, the first tab is for notes. You can give this, your song a title. Uh, if it's a, a song in an album, you can put that information here, who the artist is, the copyrights, and notes as far as uh, recording what you did when recording it or how to mix it and put all your notes down in here. And um, to just change it, just I'm gonna click and just type whatever you want to type. So this is the notes section. The next section is the uh, plugin section. So this is all kinds of plugins that we can um, insert in our project. The first one is audio effects. Okay, so we have different types of audio effects we can choose from. So if we go down to line six, for example, and we go grab um, 
let's see, guitaring up so we can drag it over to our effects menu. Let's see, track five, we'll make that our guitar. And here's our guitaring up. Now we can even go over to track five and name that guitar. And then when we go ahead and arm it for recording, uh, we can go ahead and hit the input echo, and now we can hear the guitar amp as our guitar is plugged in. Fairly simple process, actually. Let's go ahead and delete that and unarm this. Okay, so we can insert effects plugins, and then over here where it says effects, this is MIDI effects, so we can insert effects on the MIDI channels as well. Over here are instruments. And uh, these instruments are um, software DXI instruments. And to insert an instrument is, is pretty simple. Cakewalk comes with a few instruments. Here's one um, that uh, BandLab hooks out for Cakewalk. And you just click on it twice to open up the box. And then um, we're going to just for now accept all the default settings. Hit OK. And now our instrument has loaded down here. And it's put it in a subfolder. Okay, so we can collapse the folder by doing this, of course. And then you can drag out the instrument by doing this. To view the instrument you just loaded, all you gotta do is hit on this little icon here, and the instrument here loads. Okay, can't really hear it right now. Okay, so we need to set this up in the Behringer. Let's take some time and set this up. Okay, let's bring up the Behringer. Well, first we're gonna take this over to the other screen. I have another computer screen we can put this on. And then we'll pull up the Behringer Mixer, and we're going to go back and see what channels we're on. We'll play the synth, a couple of notes. Let's go back to the Behringer Mixer. Uh, there we are on 25 and 26. So we'll go ahead and raise the volumes here. Okay. And a little bit of fader. Okay, let's go back and play it again. And we'll let's go back. Okay, no sound yet. Okay, so we're going to go to 25. And we're going to go to channel, and then we're going to the stereo link. And so now you can see that this the pan it sets up the pan properly. If you highlight 26, you see the pans are set up. Okay. And now they're linked together. So if we move one fader, they move together. Okay. And if we solo a channel, they both solo. Same thing with the mute. Okay. And let's click on monitor. Okay. We want to make sure that our monitor source is left and right bus or left and right main out there we go now let's go ahead and play our software synthesizer again and see there we go there's our bass cheesy bass but there's our bass okay let's go ahead and close that out okay good now let's i'm going to drag my uh synth back from the other screen there it is so there's one of the synths that is available in cakewalk to load another one we just come over here let's see they have a drums one too si drums another cakewalk synth okay and here's our synth down here just hit the little icon here and it calls up the drums And you can you can adjust these things. We'll go through some of these synths a little bit later on. Another synth from Cakewalk is a keyboard synth. If we go down here to SI Electric Piano, hit OK. Let's load it right down here. And here's our keyboard synth. Okay. And there's different keyboards, electric uh, pianos that we can call up, Fender Rhodes, and all that kind of stuff. All in here. Okay. Another um, cakewalk synth is found here in the strings. Go ahead and click on that. Keep everything default for now. It's going to load right down here. Okay. So I'll hit this icon. Okay. Here we go. And there's our synths. But um, we're getting ahead of ourselves. Let's go ahead and hit the X and close out all these software synths. So these are all MIDI, of course, and you can see all of them have subfolders over here, okay? 
So if you didn't want a subfolder, it's fairly easy to load a synth without a subfolder. Okay, let's go ahead and uninstall a synth. Just go over here to edit and undo insert synth. And what we're going to do is we're going to inst install it again. Just double click it. Simple instrument track. Okay, synth track folder. We're just going to remove that. Okay, and now hit OK. And now here's the synth without being in a subfolder. If you wanted to, you can take like this, uh, let's see, the SSI uh, bass guitar synth, for example. We can rename that folder. We're going to say SSI synth. Okay. And then we can go down here to the drum. Right click on that, go up, up to remove folder, right click on the piano, go up to uh, remove from folder. Now what we do is click on the drum kit, hold the control down and click on the electric piano, hold the control down and click on the strings, right click and go to move to folder, SI synth. So now, now all the synths are in one folder. Then we come down here to these folders, right click on it, and delete track folder. So this is how you can manage your track folders here. Let's go hit F. Okay, so all the software synth stuff we have loaded are now, let's click on here and click it again, under one folder. So we can collapse them and expand them. We can um, mute them all or solo them all. Okay, the other type of plugins we have are rewire plugins. Okay, so we have, just click on that, and Melodyne appears, so we can use the Melodyne plugin. So we have audio effects, mini effects, uh, software synths, and rewire plugins. Okay, in our final tab, we have loops, and these are MIDI loops and audio loops. And right now we are in our audio library. I can go up a folder by hit, hitting this little icon here. And so now here's the audio library, and there is a MIDI folder down here somewhere, MIDI library. And I just click there, and I'm right in the MIDI library, and I can access um, MIDI, MIDI loops. Okay, so we're going to go up to get back to our main page here and let's go into our audio library and to insert a loop is fairly simple you just select a folder you select um, a subfolder and you let's see let's do suspense cinema let's do chase okay and just grab a loop or click on a root loop and then hit the play button Okay, and it'll play over and over again. So if you like that loop, let's see if we can find another one. Okay, let's say we like that, we're gonna drag that over to our drums. And there is the loop in our drum section. We're just gonna go ahead and move it over a little bit more. Let's rewind our now time. Now we can play our loop. Okay. Okay, now let's find another one. Let's go ahead and collapse this. Make track six a little bit bigger. Let's just vox pad. Let's look at that one. All right, we'll go ahead and use that one. Just grab that over here. Kind of eerie sounding, right? There we go. And let's see what else we have. Let's grab that. Let's bring that one over to here. Let's see what we got. Let's line it up a little bit better. Okay, good. Let's insert another audio track. 
Okay, let's move it up. There, we'll pull it down. Let's find a shaker. Okay, let's see what it sounds like. Okay, a bit of a recap. The browser will let you insert loops and plugins and allow you to create notes on the project you're working on. And of course, to collapse it, you just hit the B and you're all done. All right, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, ring the bell if you want to get notified of uh, future videos. Uh, remember to subscribe. And uh, I have some people who have made requests. They want some information regarding Cakewalk, certain features that it does. I will be making those videos pretty soon. Right now I'm working on editing the third video and it will be up shortly. So thank you for your time and I'll see you in the next video.